even if we have a good monitoring mechanism in place and as she was talking about allocating e-flows now how are we going to implement this in a situation like india so that's the next practical challenge we are going to face because five years down the line i look at a scenario in which e-flows will have to be implemented in indian context otherwise we are going to be in trouble so but then what are the challenges we are going to face so one important thing is we have this problem we are stuck by standardization so environment flows is something which can never be standardized because hydrologically geologically ecologically our rivers are different himalayan peninsula the kind plateau we have different that's why we, that's one reason why interlinking of rivers cannot happen simply we know it which by common sense so and another important thing is when many of the as uh, parnita was telling many of the methodologies have been uh, developed in the western countries but here maybe in southeast asia and in south asian situation the dependence on rivers is very high and very diverse also so how are we going to include all these aspects in while we arrive at the proper flows and another important aspect is this is always pointed out by many of the authors who are constantly working in e flows like smatkin and you know we have uh, countries like ours we are bogged down by pre dam hydrological ecological database so what benchmark are we looking at what pristine situation are we looking at from where should we start working for working towards a good uh, flows or uh, closer to like revit opera ji was saying closer to the natural flows so from where do we start and political priorities in a state like uh, india is very important each i mean you know water is a state subject so rivers also come under that so how to we know how many inter state water disputes are lying in the country in the court here tribunal here there how are we going to deal with that when you have to decide so much water has to be left for all those interstate rivers transboundary rivers like and another important thing is uh, what we have been finding in the while working in the sector for the last uh, 15 years 20 years one finds that there is a lack of awareness even among the bureaucrats and technocrats about uh, the linkages between flow ecology and how communities are different because we look at the benefits of a project only from the project amount of power generated the loss to the community downstream because of a study done by the nature conservation foundation found that at least for 472 million people all over the world have been affected downstream because of upstream interventions like these so how do we and another important aspect i think is which very very relevant is very important is now we are looking at issues at a project level so how to address things beyond the project level to the river basin level and another important aspect is we have dammed rivers and hitherto i mean which are going to be dammed pristine rivers or on the in the pipeline rivers how are we going to because already dam rivers it's going to be a very difficult negotiation process to reallocate flows flows are already there and then uh, other the institutional policy challenges the important roles which uh, i mean we are we all know as, is the government has a role here the civil society as a group voluntary organizations like us have a role over here so because how but how it's time that for at least for the sake of environment flows because the river basin is such a complex system where each and every uh, every person in the society at different levels have to take a role and very important here is are we ready to recognize that a river or is a legitimate user of water because there are laws in certain countries like south south africa australia has a wild rivers act are we ready to uh, acknowledge and what research institutions river experts can we take up sample basins in the country long back in the period of wcd world commission on dams when we had been holding workshops all over the country iman sir would be remembering we had been demanding since then we need post facto impact assessment of dams we have crossed the 5000 limit but still we don't have a proper post facto assessment including the changes in the uh, uh, flows the ecology etc etc and are we learning from the wisdom and the of uh, and the knowledge local knowledge of the riparian communities and voluntary organization of course have to there's an important role here by which they can act as catalyst and what are the enabling policy and i think this is very important because soon we'll have to move because how how long can you go on addressing things at a uh, at a single single river level because this is happening to all the rivers so at what extent you'll have to address the larger one so ecosystem can we have a can we have a legislation by which ecosystem is a legitimate user of water and another important how can be legally mandated because even moi officials i mean people bring so much data all for that eias are again changed dpr is changed dpr the data used in dpr is different from the data used in eia so many things are happening and but this becomes the basis for arriving at the flows so can we have something legally for 
uh, mandate with an accurate database on hydrology and ecology, whatever is available, is made available. And now China, uh, incidentally there was a news on China claiming the first user rights over Brahmaputra, Yarlings and so on. But for us, are we also bothered about the first user rights of the river? Can we do that? That we have to have so much flow regime within our country, within our rivers, and then we decide so much water can be left for other interventions. What should be the minimum distance? This is a very important thing which is bugging the Environmental Appraisal Committee in the context of the dams that are coming up in the Uttarakhand, in Chenna Basin, etc. Sub Basin. See, what should be the ecological criteria by which, what should be the distance between two dams? Now, even not hardly even one kilometer is left between two dams that are coming up, given the steep gradient within the Himalayan uh, catchments. Then, what can we have legislation or at least those free flowing rivers like Sirsen? which has to have a better legal uh, mandate, protection of free flowing rivers. Now, can we have, I mean, we have, we are talking about heritage sites, can we have rivers as, in Australia, in the Murray Darling River Basin, they have icons. Certain areas, certain stretches, certain uh, ecosystems have been declared as icons. So, this has to be preserved at uh, whatever be the, and for those dam rivers, this is something which we have been trying out in the river basin which we are personally working that reservoir operations management strategy. I, I, this, is, this will have to be a reality tomorrow in those dam rivers. Can we bring in it in a policy framework and frame legally enforceable rules by which the operation of the reservoir has to be tuned or redesigned in order to meet the downstream needs. Accountability, this is very important for non-compliance of the e-flows implementation, sorry, of uh, allocation or implementation, monit uh, even monitoring issues, the participation of all users and this is a very controversial subject but which I would like to place before this August audience for consistent underperformance, for social ecological cause, for even higher than the gain, can we, can we I mean, advocate for dam decommissioning? For restoring the flows, it is not something to do with, it is not a campaign at all. It is for restoring flows in those rivers where the dams have proven themselves to be underperforming. So, what is the action strategy? Last. So, I am also placing, we are also placing a few action strategies before you. I think it is time for us to challenge project level EAs which exclude impacts of flow regulation, predicted impacts of flow regulation. I think it is time to challenge CIA assessments which are just cumulated EIS of individual projects. You know that is happening in our low here, Vibang, in all these basins. So, CIA assessments have to go beyond. We have to, it is time that we start demanding basin studies, uh, only admit basin studies, then you go because within basin studies even how many dams can be possible will come out. Otherwise, it will always go on dam, cumulated impact assessment, and then sanction the project. And important is, like Pari was saying earlier, demystify the technical domain of e-flows assessment. And can we pitch our campaigns? We all have been, uh, some of us here, some of us here have a, a campaign, uh, can we use e-flows to save the entire river, entire tributary, sub-basin with all the dams proposed? We are looking at the, taking the dams, uh, this debate beyond and taking it to the river basin level. And so the last two words that I would like to place, place before all of you is, uh, of course, we have to have keep in mind that we are all going to lose together. It is not that only ecosystem is going to lose, we are also going to lose in the process. And uh, But it is not a legitimization that e-flows, as many people have been talking, it is not a legitimization that more dams can come and you release the flows. It is not that. Pitching it as a tool, an appropriate tool, both for restoring degraded rivers as well as challenging in the larger context of the river basin uh, that what, how a river should be flowing.